these weekend to like early midweek game turnarounds, uh, I feel like doing these recaps and preview videos have taught me that I have a lot of respect for the players who actually go through this. Cause like, I feel like I'm scrambling just to go from Kentucky's overtime loss to Texas A&M. And now they're back at home against Mississippi state. Who's pretty good. Like, I feel like I'm scrambling and I can't imagine being Reed Shepard going from like the high stakes free throws to like, I got a game in Rupp against a good team two days later. Like that's tough. It is, but he's also Reed Shepard. Mm. Like this, this is in him. This is what he does. Mm. And I, like, he, will, he will go any lengths for Kentucky basketball. I don't know if you will, Greg. I don't know. Do you think I'll go to lengths for like anything in my life? Like, is it a I mean, me issue know, I, or is it like a, Kentucky? I mean, like the, I mean like the classic, like, you know, wife and kids, that's, that's an easy answer though. I don't know if there's an external thing that you would go. I mean, maybe this, you go to lengths for sleepers. So you don't think I want it bad enough. Sometimes. No. Am I sneaky athletic? You, you're also very gritty and coachable. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kentucky at home, Mississippi state should be a fun one. Mississippi state. Is 29th on Ken Palm, six spots higher than Texas AM. Uh, if you just go by Ken Palm numbers as a Bible for how tough every game is, this is the third toughest opponent that Kentucky has faced this season. They're 12 and four. Lost two of their three in SEC play thus far, though. Um, I don't know. I like Chris Jans is a good coach. They have a really good defense. This is a team I want to believe in, but then they dropped at home to Alabama. And then I remembered that they lost to South Carolina. And then I remembered that they lost to Southern at home in the non-conference. I, I kind of don't understand how this team is 29th on Ken Palm, to be honest with you. Well, they I mean, earlier in the year, they were missing uh, Tolu Smith. So getting him back definitely massively helped. Was concerned about them dropping that game at home to Bama. I thought that's one they should have got. But look, they got guys. Like, I, I will say that, like, Tolu Smith is really good. The freshman Hubbard is like a 5'10 dynamite bucket getter. That's just amazing and fun to watch. Um, shades of like Carson Edwards type heating up heat check type player. Uh, he's really fun. And, you know, Jans is a coach that has like guys locking in on the, on the defensive end. And I think he's done a really good job, honestly, at Mississippi State and getting some players in there and uh, kind of establishing a system and a culture. So they're a really good team. To me, I don't think they're a team that is, like, great, like, top 30, like you said, on Ken Palm. But I think they're good, and I think they have, like, the – what's the word? Like, the they have the chops to, like, go on the road and win on the SEC, in my mind. I don't think they do. This might just be me downplaying it, but I'm pretty out on this team. Uh, if there was, like, a sell-buy game based on, like, Ken Palm number now to where they'll end the season – I think Mississippi State being 29th right now would be a hard sell. I think they could finish outside the top 50 at the end of the year. Tolu Smith's really good. Tolu Smith stunk in the Alabama loss. It was 5 for 15 from the floor, 5 for 10 from free throw, 5 turnovers. I don't know. If you get a decent Tolu game, you probably win that game. And I don't really believe in Alabama, to be honest with you, either. Like, Grant Nelson and Aaron Estrada both finished in single digits in that game. They still got a road win by 8, so... I don't know. I uh, like, obviously you face a top 10 defense in the country. Like that's a big deal. It's always a hard opponent, but part of why I think their, their defense is rated so highly is teams just haven't made threes against them. They're ninth in the country. Uh, they allow opponents just 27% made shots from three. I don't think that's going to last forever. Like I think it, they've gotten some luck for lack of a better word. The teams have just missed shots. Kentucky is the eighth best three-point shooting team in the country. They're shooting 40% as a team on the season. This could be one of those aberration games to me where, like, something's got to give. Kentucky just makes, like, 15 threes at home and up, and all of a sudden Mississippi State's numbers don't look so good after it. Yeah, I can see that, and they do have the guards to make it happen. I mean, you you mentioned Aaron Estrada was in single digits against his Mississippi State team. Um, you know, Mark Sears wasn't. I think I believe Mark Sears had about 22 or 25 points in this game on good percentages. Um, so these Kentucky guards, I think, will be able to, you know, get their buckets at home too as well. And look, that that game against Texas A&M was, I guess, for lack of a better term, just wild in all facets. Um, and the only thing that scares me more so than Mississippi State as an opponent is just like the come down from that type of game, like overtime, 
battling game in the 90s on the road against an SEC opponent. It was it was a tough, tough game. And obviously they came up on the short end and they don't have time to lick their wounds because if you do come home and you're just still focused on that or letting that linger, Mississippi State is a team that can take advantage of that. So, but with that said, I it does seem to me like this is a Kentucky hits 12 to 14, like you said, threes. And it might get away from Mississippi State. So what I think I'm hearing from you is that the ball's in Kentucky's hands, and they yes. control what happens in this game. It's not it's not yes. much of what tech, or, uh, Mississippi State does. Okay, I agree with that, and that should be terrifying because if the ball's in Kentucky's hands, that probably means the ball's in Reed Shepard's hands, and he's just smiling with it. Or the ball's in Rob Dillingham's hands, and he's, like, telling everybody, get out of the way. Like, I'm a cook. I'm going to do your favorite offense, cook him. Uh, I, uh, You weren't on the recap. I did the recap with Brian Ralph yesterday. I said that coming out of the Texas A&M game, I actually feel better about Kentucky. To the point that uh, I've changed my national title pick, Cart. I'm picking Kentucky to win the national championship as of today, January 16th. Uh, I'm not, I'm not ducking the Illinois smoke for the record. I still like Illinois to the final four with this roster, but Kentucky's the pick because I think they have serial killers. Like I think they literally, those guys have murdered somebody. I believe that. And I hope that is, I shouldn't make murder jokes in the sec. I know that's a thing. So like, sorry, we don't want any more players murdering anybody, but uh, those guys scare me like as actual psychopaths, Shepard and Dillingham. Uh, do you feel the same as me? Do you feel better about Kentucky after the AM loss? I, I definitely do because I still think they're continuing to like this is the type of game that they, uh, you know, not to hang the moral victory banner, but like they need a little bit of a battle tested, hard ass on the game, on the road game where they didn't come out on top. Like, at least it's happening right now. I still came away very impressed with them. And look, like you said, with the guards they have, if they can get the production from everyone, you know, everyone else, uh, it's it's going to be a really dangerous team. And you, you, do you know how much of a killer you got to be for your name to be Reed Shepard and have a haircut like he does and strike and be a freshman and strike fear in people? Because he does. Like, Reed Shepard is, is scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's really good. Yeah. So I've been watching, like, a lot of true crime documentaries lately. <laughs> um, that's a whole other story. But I can tell you this very confidently. The only thing scarier than one serial killer is a serial killer who teams up with another serial killer. That's – you don't ever want that. Like, the local police do not want those problems – and that's like a, exactly, like, a serial, like a serial killer pick and roll. That's exactly what Kentucky has at their disposal right now. Like they've got these two 18 year old maniacs that come off the bench and are just like, we're going to eat your face. And it works. <laughs> and they do it every single game. Uh, and that that's like, I, we're making it all about Shepard and Dillingham, but like, They've got five killer starters, too, that are, like, a little more rationally wired and uh, just good basketball players. Like, this team's so loaded. And, uh, yeah, the fact that Shepard and Dillingham, like, had some big moments that kept that game alive, Stripes also did. Uh, it, to get to overtime and then it kind of fell apart at Dillingham's hands is, like, on brand a little bit. And if you listen to what Cal and Dillingham have both said, I expect a bounce back in this game. Cal's kind of like taking the reins back in of like, I, I let them do him a little too much. We're going to rein it back in. And Dillingham was just like, oh yeah, we needed a loss. <laughs> like, I love no, that. No, Dillingham, so Dillingham hit that. Like, I'm going to hit that. Like, I'm going to hit that in March. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Just crazy. Just a, uh, just a, a psycho <laughs> in, in the most loving, like, I love this team way of all time. Yeah, it's truly incredible. Um, okay, so quick SEC pulse check broadly, and then we'll wrap this. Uh, Auburn and Alabama are undefeated. They're 3-0 and in conference play. Tennessee and Kentucky are 2-1, and along with a big just grouping of teams I don't think are that good. South Carolina, Ole Miss, Georgia, and LSU. Mississippi and Texas A&M are the teams that are supposed to be good, but they're 1-2. and two. And then Arkansas, 
disaster. We know what's up with them, 0-3. Uh, and yes, Todd Golden, I'm keeping my eye on you. You're one and two. You barely cracked the relevant list for me right now. So it, do you think Kentucky wins this conference comfortably still? Because Auburn and Alabama are a game up on them in the loss column right now. Uh, I, I don't, I, you said, do I think Kentucky wins it comfortably? Yes. No, no, I, I, I think it's going to be, a, I think Auburn is going to be a factor. I really like Auburn. Okay. Um, do you think Auburn wins the conference? Uh, I'd love to see how the schedule actually shakes out. I wonder like when Auburn and Kentucky play or how many times they do play, but that it might come down to that. I think it'll be within like two to three games. So I guess that's kind of winning it comfortably in some people's eyes. Um, but I actually think for some reason, I think that Auburn does win the SEC regular season. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think they do. I mean, what they've been doing, I've been impressed by them and they're not even getting good play from a guy who I think is a, a bona fide bucket himself and Aiden Holloway. So yeah, I, 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 I think I'm buying regular season SEC champ Auburn. Now, Kentucky SEC tournament champions, Kentucky goes the farthest of any SEC team in, you know, in what's it called, uh, in the NCAA tournament. But, uh, yeah, I think Auburn was the regular season. Okay. I agree with you that Auburn is the biggest threat. I think they're a very good basketball team, top 10 team in the country. I think Alabama is going to fall apart at some point. Uh, Tennessee will be there for the long run. Want it on record. Kentucky's winning this conference. I think Kentucky's winning this conference, and I don't think it's going to be uncomfortable either. They got to get there. Uh, Auburn has some winnable games coming up still. They got to go at Alabama, at Mississippi State, both in the next two weeks. Then things will get interesting from there. But I uh, I don't know. I, I just think Kentucky's going to find a way. I think their talent is too good. Um, I think they're going to lose less than five games over this course of this conference season. If they go um, – 14 and four in conference. I think that's the number they need to win. I think they get there. That's my prediction. All right, Car, uh, predict who wins this game. They got Kentucky by five, according to Ken Palm at home, 80 to 75. What do you think happens? Ooh, I like that note. Uh, let's see. I think that they have a rough explosion. I think they're going to touch 90 in this game. Um, I think that's going to be, they're going to make a lot of threes, which me saying that means they probably won't, but I believe that they will. I think they they win this. They end up winning this game by double digits. So I'd go like ninety to ninety to seventy seventy eight. Okay, um, I like that. I think they're gonna pour it on. I think this is a big offensive game for Kentucky. I think they win by double digits as well. All right, uh, go Cats, BBN. We see you. We'll be here for the recap later this week.